Well, we're back. Another year, 2012, has just begun. Finally, winter has showed up. We got to throw some salt this morning, which was nice, considering the month of December was pretty much non-existent winter-wise. So it's nice to get a start to winter, finally get to throw some salt. Um, got to participate, or be a part of, whatever you want to call it, a webinar today conducted by Lawn and Landscape Magazine. Very informative webinar. Uh, discussing how you can grow your business in 2012. Marnie Grudner and Joe Calloway were the key speakers. Uh, and it was it was neat. It was nice to be a part of it. Got to listen in on it and and you know get some advice and some pointers from two of the you know leading experts in our industry. So I've got to clean the ports. Uh, once I get the carburetor all cleaned up, I've got some WD on there soaking on the grease and stuff, and I'll just take 150 pounds of air and just blow all that dirt right off of it, you know, and then re-lubricate it. But I gotta so as you can see behind me, we've got our salt spreader loaded up and ready to go. Uh, we've been ready to go since December pretty much. As you can see here, um, that bright ball of sun up there, not really helping us too much today because we don't have any snow on the ground. And it's been like that all winter. We've done one salt run so far this season, uh, which equated out to about two tons. So we're still sitting on over 60 tons of salt. And uh, the, the projected forecast over the next 10 days looks like we might get a little bit of work out of it. But overall, the winter has just been very, very slow for us. We, it's been non-existent. And more importantly, we, it, it just, we haven't done anything. We've had the plows on the trucks. And like I say, we've got the salt spreader loaded. We've only used it one time. so. That's, uh, that's not been very good for the company and the business overall, but uh, it has given us an opportunity to get into the shop a little bit more, and we're doing some cleaning and some organizing and doing the things that we don't usually have the time to do uh, in, the, in the busy season. So um, we're keeping our fingers crossed, hoping some you know, winter will show up sooner um, than later because my, my concerns are that you know, we'll get the snow in March when we need to be out you know, doing our spring cleanups and fertilizers. But, yeah, you know, we just we just keep going with it, and you know, hope that one of these days we'll see some white stuff slow, uh, flying through the air. So we showed up backstage. That was the first time that I, or the second time that I met him. Hell of a nice guy. Well, we had a good day today. Senior got to go out this morning. He went out around 5 o'clock, and we got to do some salting on all of our lots. Um, we got a little bit of snow overnight, as you can see behind me. It really didn't amount to much, maybe around about an inch. But uh, big time wind chills. I think we're having wind chills near zero, if not a little bit below zero. And we're dealing with a little bit of blowing and drifting snow. Um, not enough to unfortunately put the plows to the pavement. We really don't like to put the plows down unless there's at least two or three inches uh, to merit plowing. So we, uh, we just did some salting this morning, which was nice. It was nice to get a little bit of work finally. It, it's, been, uh, it's been about a week and a half since we did any sort of work the last time we did salting. So now, you know, we're 13th of January, Friday, unfortunately, Friday the 13th, but I don't know if any, any of you are superstitious, which I'm not, but um, two salt runs so far in January, which, you know, we'd like to see more, but any, any little bit we get to do is help. You know, is going to help us. So this guy's an '89. He's got a lot of hours. We just use it for other stuff. But here's here's the parts, pretty much that we 
field we need to hold, have here, you know. Uh, we even keep an actuator because now three of our six decks are, are, the, are the high, high mm -hmm. performance guys. But we got, you know, these2011, yeah. We just okay. picked this up last year. 544. Yep. Okay. So we're, we hover right yeah. between that five and 600 hours. Uh, a year. You mean here? In, in one season. Dad runs that. He he always uh, gets the newest one. Mm -hmm. You know, um, which is cool. I mean, I'm I mean, I'm fine yeah. with that. That's that's how it should be. Yeah. But uh, so he runs this one. You know, 98 percent of the time. And then you know, obviously the snow thrower. We we've had that for two or three seasons now. Um, unfortunately, I haven't had to use it a lot. Say, you, you said you had some stuff this earlier this week. Was it just ice? We had some on um, had some icy conditions last night, but then last weekend, Friday into Saturday, we ended up getting about four inches. Oh, um, okay. But the way it fell, it fell on the weekends, and nobody needed their walks done. They just needed lots and driveways cleared. Yeah. And then by Monday, it had melted off. So uh, we haven't gotten to use it yet, but I have used it in the past, and I. I swear up and down by it. If, if you're if you're doing snow removal, if you're doing sidewalks and driveways, it's awesome. It's <laughs> just incredible, you know. And, and the way I really kind of was sold on it was a, a friend of mine that used to be in the business. He had one, and one of our clients, we were in a pinch. They they usually do their own sidewalks, and it was mm -hmm. a very heavy wet snow, probably in the neighborhood of eight to ten inches. And mm -hmm. their little lawn and garden tractor with the blade just wasn't going to have it. So they called and asked if we could ha do anything about it, and I and I knew my, my buddy had the snow thrower, and we were told, yeah, 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 we, we have, we've got a snow thrower, we can take care of it, no problem. So we went, and I borrowed his, and, and went down there, and, and it just, oh, amazing. You know, throwing this mm -hmm. up 20, 30 feet, you know, busting through, I mean, because it was really thick, heavy, wet, icy snow, and it just, it, it never, never, you know, <coughs> what, I, what I'm most impressed with is not just how far it throws the snow, but... What we deal with a lot, especially at this theological school that I'm referring to, is you do the main drive, and as the, you're plowing the snow to the sides, mm -hmm. where the sidewalks meet mm -hmm. the crosswalks, you, know, you get those berms of, mm -hmm. of snow, and then it freezes, and then you have an iceberg. That thing 
chisels through it, through it, you know, and through creates it. these walls of snow. I mean, perfectly yeah. shaped, uh -huh. you know, walkways. And it's just, it just if you, if you take your time and you have the power of the engine and the motor behind you and you let it do its work, it works. I really really saw, I think, the first video. You only had the videos were posted on your history. You had a conversation with your dad, and you're talking about Grasshopper from 1978 and all this stuff, and this promise no downtime, we'll give you another unit and all that. And it was pretty intriguing. And so I started watching that, and it, and it was neat to see a video nationwide, worldwide, that was totally, it was genuine, it was organic, as, as you call it in, in, search in, in the search industry, that we had nothing to do with it. It's not like we interviewed you and shot the video and put it on there ourselves. It was all you. Now what's neat about that, there are times in your videos that you maybe show um, a grasshopper breaking down, that you've got some, some work you have to do on it. But what's neat is that's real. That, that shows, if you're showing that in the video, that shows that that, that, it's, that, that stuff really happens. And if, if a factory puts out, or a manufacturer puts out a video like that, they're not going to show you that kind of stuff. So it's really neat to show that this is pretty real if they're showing that stuff. And at the same time, to put it in perspective, the, the issues you're having are minimal, but at the same time, you're putting, well, this machine's a year old, it's got 544 hours on it already. I mean, that, that, so stuff can happen, daily wear and tear. Any, any product's going to have that kind of, kind of that, those minor issues, I suppose. At, at, at the dump here. I made sure, I was like, I'm coming to Columbus, I'm really close, I gotta come see this place. And it's really impressive. Uh, it's clean, it's orderly, it's, it's really neat to see how grasshoppers are a big part of your, your business, and the, but they're not the only part of your business. You, know, you, you use some handheld equipment, maybe you, you use some really big bat wing stuff, you're, you're spreading salt and whatever, but it seems, it, I guess maybe it fuels my company ego to, to see that grasshoppers, you've got six of them, and that's a big part of your business. But it's neat to see how, in addition to that, how you are... Uh, maintenance schedules are set up and how your organization is set up and the company and how you manage your business as a whole and we're, we really, we're just a small part of it, but it's neat to see that, that we feel like a big part of it. So you were telling me that you've got some growth plans for your company and that you see buying two additional grasshoppers, not to replace your fleet, but to go in addition to it. And that's really neat to, that, that you are relying on us for a good product to be able to expand your business, and, and in a way, we're really, we're relying on you for, um, for the business, and it's, it's works out. partnership of sorts. Uh, I keep wondering when um, TLC or Bravo or one of those reality channels is calling you after they've seen all of your uh, mowing things videos, and when they're gonna, you know, pitch you a show. To uh, I'd, I'd like to sh be sure to share. I've shared this with some of my immediate coworkers, but I'd like to share it with. The people who are assembling and welding and fabricating and painting this machine, so that they can see, you know, some of these real life people out in the field who uh, who are using equipment that they work so hard to put together.